into my baseball now because I didn't play any other sport. I tried to play golf, didn't do very well. I tried to play football, but they tapped me through the hard lines. Sad I wouldn't do that, so I decided I was to take up baseball. So, but good luck to you guys, the golfers and the football players, whoever else. You know, good luck to you guys. But my remarks, I guess, is somewhat. When I talk about baseball because that's 23 years, that's what I did. And 23 years is what I try to do. <coughs> the best that I can do, you know, is to play baseball. But other than that, I say I feel good. I say, and the reason I feel good is because what I've done with my life since I've gotten out of baseball. You know, but, but the most important thing is that when we won the two championships, <coughs> I tell this story often because some people don't really believe it. But it's the truth is that the year that we won the championship beat the Yankees, that our cut in the World Series was $11,000. And it's a true story. It's a true story that every day after the series was over, I used to go to the post office and meet the mailman halfway to see if he had my check. Because I had never seen $11,000. I didn't even see that coming. So finally, I got a little tired, so I called up the Milwaukee Braves, and I told him, I said, listen, I said, <clears throat> my check had not gotten me yet. They said, well, it's coming. He said, let's give it another week. So sure enough, another week came, and I opened it up, and there was my $11,000. Because it didn't form of just a paper. Oh, wait, wait, there's something wrong. So I went to the bank, and I gave it to the teller. I said, Mr. Ed, I said, we're going to put this in your savings account or you want to put it in your checking account? I said, no. I said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I said, I want you to count all that money out, put it in a paper bag, and let me go home. <laughs> 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 and sure enough, I got it all in a little paper bag, and I ran home. I was living in this little house. I put the shades down, and locked all the doors. <laughs> This eleven thousand dollars, and after I finished counting, uh, I decided I said, "Well, you might want to get ready to start paying some bills, son." So I started paying light bill, water bill, and I uh, grocery and all that. So when I ended up, I had at the end of it, I had a dollar fifty cents left. That's what I had left out of that. Because as you know, the only way that you want to be successful. About what you did yesterday is to think about what you can do today to make you even better than what you were yesterday. And that's why I was who I was. I was a baseball player and I played for 23 years. The weakness that I had, I had to make myself do it. I, 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 this comes with a story, and I'll tell you the story. Is that I had to make sure that I, when I was a young kid coming up in the Negro League, Back in Alabama, where I had no form of instruction, nobody teach me how to properly hit the ball and all that. I did everything the wrong way. You know, they teach you how to hold the bat this way. This is the correct way to hold the bat. Being from Alabama, I didn't know any different. I held the bat across from me this way. And nobody never taught me how to do it. <coughs> After learning myself how to do it the right way, then I had to learn how to make connections with the ball. You know, rather than strike it out, I had to make sure that I make connections. I played with the likes of Warren Spawn. I played with uh, Matthews. I played with uh, I played with uh, I played with Willie. I played with Willie Mays. I played with Ernie Banks. But I, I guess the player that 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 you really enjoy playing with. Is Usually the player that played with you on everyday basis, that you see every day, that you see other players don't get a chance, an opportunity to see. So I would have to say uh, Matthew probably was the greatest player I've seen. I mean, not that I, that I played. I would not be where I am today if it were not for this gentleman here. I was fortunate enough to get in the business because of him. I was fortunate enough to uh, to get myself involved in uh, some 
dealerships. I had the, the BMW. I had the Toyota. I had the Honda. I had it all. And I now have how many stores we have? Thirty. Thirty-two. We have thirty-two restaurants. So you know, and only because of the people that I met outside of the game. And that is very, very important. That's why I tell a lot of people, you know, the game itself is great, but why you doing it, why you hit home runs or doing the right thing, make sure you make friendship with somebody else outside so you can, because your life going to go on. You're not going to play baseball or football or basketball or whatever all your life. You know, you got to go on. So I would say that if I had not been for people like this Cabarotti here and some other people that I've met along the way, that uh, life would have been <laughs> yeah, yes, I hit 755 home runs. None of you may not ever hit 755 home runs. Some of you may not hit, hit 40 home runs. But some of you can be the greatest doctor, you can be the greatest teacher, you can be the greatest lawyer, you can be great at something. That's what you can be great at. But the most important thing is that you can't emulate, you can't go around just because Henry Aaron did this way, or somebody else did it, I got to do it his way. Do it your way, and find the most convenient way. And the other thing is that remember one thing that I'm going to close. There is no shortcut in life. Nowhere. Nothing you want to do. Baseball, basketball, football, no matter what it may be, there is no shortcut in life. So with that, I'd like to say I wish all of you the very best of luck. Thank you very much.